Hello everybody and welcome to this latest episode of The Money Man. Now, the images used in today's video actually come from a recent auction hosted by Spink and Son. I reached out to one of the employees there and said, Hey, do you mind if I use your images for a little educational video? And, um, you know, the employee said, yeah, sure. Um, so I just want to let you guys know that I do not own the banknotes, nor do I own the images presented in this video. They are actually property of Spink and Son. Uh, so a little bit of a shout out to them. Please follow the link in the description if you want to learn more about the, their operation. However, I have no affiliation with them whatsoever. So now that's out of the way. Let's start today's story. So... These banknotes actually come from my humble home, the UK. That's right. And the notes that I'm going to present to you today were actually born in a time of great schism. Now, in 1914, the Austro-Hungarian Archduke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated in public by an obscure Serbian separatist movement. And that plunged Europe and the wider world into the great calamity that became known as the War to End All Wars, the First World War. And the demands of that war meant that many governments involved in that great calamitous event had to make some very drastic changes to almost every level of their societies, and the UK was no different. And the UK decided that what it had to do was basically hold on to as much of its precious metal supply as possible. And you've got to remember that during these days, you know, in 1914, Britain was still on the gold standard, and you actually had circulating currency, coins that contain precious metals, namely half sovereigns and sovereigns. And the government decided that they wanted all that precious metal back in their hands. So what they decided to do was basically issue special banknotes to replace half sovereigns and sovereigns so they could hoover up all those precious metals that were circulating in the form of currency and in order to do this they had to introduce a spe special act and this is part of it just a small part of it if you want to read the whole thing i'll put a link in the description so you can have a look but i'll read a little bit if you want to pause the video and read the rest entirely up to you it says be it enacted by the king's most excellent majesty by and with the advice and consent of the Lords Spiritual and Temporal and Commons in this present Parliament assembled, and by the authority of the same, as follows. The Treasury may, subject to the provisions of this Act, issue currency notes for one pound and for ten shillings, and those notes shall be current in the United Kingdom in the same manner and to the same extent, and as fully as sovereigns and half-sovereigns are current, and shall be legal tender in the United Kingdom for the payment of any amount. Now, I know the language is a little bit outdated and kind of stuffy and formal, but what it's basically saying is, hey, instead of having circulated coins, sovereigns and half-sovereigns, we're going to replace these with paper notes. And this will allow us to um, keep hold of the precious metals, but keep those same denominations or the equivalent values in circulation and in use. And they'll also be backed up by gold, just like the coins that they're replacing. Boom. Simple. Okay, so that's what we're working on today. So let's have a look at some examples, okay? Now this one is from 1914. You can see it's a 10 shillings note. And you can see that it's issued by the Treasury because it actually has the signature, John Bradbury, who was the Secretary of the Treasury at the time. Now you can see over to the left, we've got um, the uh, image, the portrait of George V, who was the king at the time, the reigning monarch. And you can see there's no ambiguity about the value of this banknote. We have 10 shillings right across the middle and then the denomination on the far right in huge numbers. Um, and you can see that it says these notes are a legal tender for a payment of any amount issued by the Lord's Commissioners of His Majesty's Treasury under authority of Act of 
Parliament. And that is referencing the act that I just read a small section of to you. Okay, so very, very interesting stuff. Um, so you can see the terms and conditions are slightly different than other banknotes that were produced before this time. Um, so very, very interesting indeed. Now you can see the design is quite plain. The reason for that, well, there's two reasons actually. Banknotes were not as sophisticated as you would expect, um, given the limitations of printing technology at the time. Um, so that's one thing to take into consideration. The second thing is there's a war on, a very, very, very great war <laughs> at this time, and resources have to be conserved. So, of course, these banknotes will have been produced in the cheapest manner possible uh, without compromising too much on quality. Um, so there we go. So let's have a look at another one. Now, you can see we've got a very interesting one pound note from 1915, and you can see that there is an Arabic overprint on this. And the reason for this is because this banknote would have been used during the Dardanelles campaign when the British Empire was fighting against the Ottoman Empire in the Dardanelles. So that's why this one has actually got an Arabic overprint. Um, but you can see all the basic same elements there. But one slight interesting addition on this one pound note if you look over to the right, we actually have the crown and inside that we have St. George, the patron saint of England. Um, and you can see he's on horseback slaying a dragon. Now, uh, St. George is actually the patron saint of many countries um, and is also respected and revered in many, many other countries as well. So very, very interesting, but he's actually the patron saint of England. England. But you can see that the design of this one pound note is pretty simple as well. But you can see again we've got John Bradbury, Secretary of the Treasury. Very interesting indeed. Now this is where it gets starts to get more interesting because you can see a wonderful example from 1918 here. Um, and you can see what I love about this banknote is you've got Britannia and she features so prominently and she looks so proud and strong. You can see she's got her shield with the Union flag on and she's got her trident aloft and you know she's sort of gazing over towards the heavens basically and staring back at her. Um, we've got uh, King George V. So it's quite interesting how they've sort of shifted the monarch's portrait over to the right side so he can be staring over at the patriotic image of Britannia. Very, very interesting indeed. But you can see that actually this feels a little bit more sophisticated in its design. However, the technology involved is pretty much the same. But this is a gorgeous, gorgeous bino. And I wish, I wish I had an example in my own collection and the, the quality of this the, the the grading of this is absolutely phenomenal as well um so very very beautiful piece from 1918 and these treasury notes were actually they continued to produce them right up until 1928 um and i might do a separate video as to what happened after 1928 i think that will be something that i'll save on save for later on but it's a very very interesting story and you can see we've got another example from around 1918. This is a one pound note. And instead of having Britannia on the left, we've actually got a huge image of St. George. Um, again, a banknote that I would absolutely love to own. Um, but in grades like this, I think this one was around about 66. Um, it's going to be pricey, very pricey. Um, but well worth the investment in my opinion. Um, so yeah, and you can see actually we've got a different um, uh, signature for the secretary to the treasury. Now, if you're wondering what the treasury is, in more modern times it's actually called the exchequer. That's what we call it in the UK um, uh, these days. Um, so just a slight change in terminology there, but it's, it's the same thing. So there we go. So... Now let's take a moment to just appreciate the wonderful reverse of this one pound treasury note because it's quite unique not for what it has but for what it doesn't have and you'll notice very quickly that there is no representation of the denomination or the value of this banknote whatsoever on the reverse and that is very very unusual. 
All you've got is this wonderful vignette of the Houses of Parliament sat by the River Thames. And you can see some other iconic buildings. Just to the left, we've got Westminster Abbey. And over to the right, poking out at the back, you can see a Big Ben. So what we've got is the second uh, representation of power here in the UK. And of course, that is the representation of the democratic value, uh, sorry, democratic power, which of course is the Houses of Parliament. You know, we have the constitutional monarchical power represented in King George V on the obverse. And here we have the representation of the constitutional democratic power here on the reverse in the form of Parliament. And I think some people would argue that this banknote looks kind of unfinished because of the lack of writing or numerical values attributed to the banknote. But I, I don't really agree with that assertion. I think this, this vignette really gives this banknote its own unique character and I really really like it I think it's wonderful and again I've got to bring up that point where I said before you know that these these treasury notes were conceived and produced in a time of great resource shortage everything was being used to find the great war um, and even after the war there were still a lot of shortages um, in in you know in Europe in general uh, particularly in the UK so I think it's important to take that into consideration. Um, I think they did a great job with this banknote. This gives it a really interesting, unique flavor. And I just think the image is just wonderful. It's beautifully done. Um, so there we go. I would love to know what you think about this banknote in the comment section, actually. Do you think it looks unfinished? Because a lot of people do say that. Um, people that I've chatted to anyway about this one. But yeah, let me know. But let's flip back onto the obverse and you can see I think there's no ambiguity or argument as to the value of this treasury note. You can see it's got one pound in huge letters. There's no ambiguity here. So I think anything, um, you know, any letdowns created by the reverse are pretty much remedied by the obverse. So there we go. That's everything that I have to show you today. Um, these banknotes were obviously introduced uh, during a time of a great great schism and they actually lasted like i said until 1928 um when the act was actually um, rescinded for want of a better phrase um and the treasury no longer issued banknotes and later on you get this transition period where you know we move towards the abandonment of the gold standard and then you have the introduction of fiat currency uh, of which the bank of england becomes the sole issuer of uh, banknotes for england and wales um not scotland and northern ireland different 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 subjects going on there so i will talk about that in another video it's complex it's it's messy um but i'm going to try and break down this subject for you guys because it causes a lot of confusion but it's hugely hugely interesting at the same time so thank you so much for watching this video and i will see you guys in the next one it's the money man signing out for now bye bye